Yeah, I mean, so like the the episodes are short. They're what thirty minute episodes, um, and so there's only eight of them. So you don't actually have a lot of space, I think, to tell the story. And I, I had talked to a couple of people who found who were really frustrated with how incomplete the storylines are, or even like the structure of storytelling. Um, where so I was working recently with a Navajo videographer, um, a woman who is a documentarian, right? And so she works in the industry, in the media industry. And she gets told constantly that the way that she constructs narratives in the documentaries, she, she does documentaries exclusively about indigenous topics. And she, you know, she has indigenous interlocutors kind of narrating um, the things that she shoots, but she gets told constantly by non-native executives that she's trying to pitch projects to that um, she doesn't follow a conventional storyline or that her stories don't make sense. I'm doing scare quotes right now. <laughs> you can't see me unless you're watching the video um, because she refuses, right, to follow. I think it's kind of like the, the the plot device that you usually see um, in a lot of television and, and film. And so the Reservation Dogs is very similar. It's very unsatisfying. If you're looking for, like, conclusive storylines or conclusive even politics about identity or anything like that, you're not going to find it in this show. Each of the episodes almost serves as like a, a separate vignette about, about life to try to give you a really full, complex, and rich picture of what life is like in this community for lots of different people, um, all of these different characters. And as Elena says, it's almost like by the end of the first season, you get this sense of how they relate to one another, but you don't really get a strong sense of their identities or even their characters in a lot of ways. There's a lot of ambivalence, like Bear. Um, so Bear is one of the four teenagers. I would say he's the protagonist. In the group, I, I would say the story kind of, he's the front runner for the group of four. And so he really anchors a lot of the show. But Bear is an interesting character because he's a very angsty, very indecisive young man, young indigenous man. I find him very frustrating <laughs> as a character because as a main character, you want him to be strong, and, you know, to have like a really definitive sense of self, um, like and indigenous men, we'll talk a little bit more about this. I think indigenous men, the way that they're portrayed, they usually have these really strong archetypes of how they're supposed to be. And Bear isn't an archetype. He's kind of fumbles and bumbles. He gets beat up. He has um, Dallas Goldtooth play, plays his, uh, his spirit, <laughs> his spirit warrior. And Dallas is just this like failed kind of hilarious warrior. Um, he's mostly just a jokester. He gets lost a lot. He like, you know, he's not really a warrior. He's funny. He comes as a warrior, um, as a warrior spirit, but he's not really a warrior. And so the Bear's character, I would say, especially since he's the protagonist of the show, I think just demonstrates the larger kind of um, character or personality of Reservation Dogs as something that is not really interested in having these like conclusive or decisive understandings of identity or even even plot right and i think that that's a very and did i would argue you know as you do elena that that's a very indigenous way of going about telling stories um that probably makes you know like white and other non-native executives crazy because <laughs> they're like what's this what's the point of this episode 